So we will start today from the uh, skeletal system. Mm. So the basic structural unit of human skeleton is bone. Okay. As like a cell is the basic structural unit of body. Th like that only a single bone or bone is the structural unit of skeletal system. Bone is a calcified connective tissue characterized by mineralized matrix. So, uh, bone is calcified connective tissue. We have already discussed how collagen fiber are there and on those collagen fiber, on the network of collagen fiber, uh, calcium matrix is pulled and thus bone is made do you remember the concept yes ma'am okay so uh, and inside that matrix we can find bone marrow now functions of bone body support bone provides hard framework and support the body okay next is body movement movement due to attach skeletal muscles when we voluntarily move our skeletal muscles then muscles are attached with bone then bones also move and there are joints between bones that is why movement is possible protection of soft organs yes surrounding organs such as brain spinal cord heart lungs etc all are protected by our skeletal system most important brain is protected by skull heart lungs protected by rib cage very important spinal cord is protected by our backbone and pelvic girdle is protecting our reproductive organs. Now, storage of minerals. Obviously, when we uh, we we have seen that uh, the bone is totally made up of calcium, phosphorus, all these things. So, it is totally made up of minerals. So, it is a treasure of minerals too. Storage of minerals like calcium, phosphorus are stored within bone. Now, formation of blood cells. So, uh, you all know bone marrow? Yes, ma'am. The yes. inside layer of the bone. Yes. So, from bone marrow, blood cells get formed. Okay, so bone marrow is responsible for blood cell production. So formation of blood cell is also from bone only. So these are the main functions of skeletal system you can see here in the slide. Now structure of bone here you can see very clearly. Bone consists of compact bone, spongy bone and bone cells okay now you can see here in this picture very clearly that the outer layer the very outer part of bone is compact bone that is very hard and blood vessels are going from inside to outside of bones you can see here in this picture, blood vessels are going, means uh, they are outside of bone, but they can go inside too. Here you can see a blood vessel is coming and disappearing here. Means it is going inside and it is coming from here, you can see. So, uh, yes. Now, after compact bone, the second layer is 
Spongy bone. A porous inner layer. In this layer, you can see it's not very compact. It's, it's a bit loose. It is spongy. Okay. Spongy in the sense, similar structure. It is porous. That is why it is uh, called as a spongy. And bone cells are osteoblast, osteocytes, osteoclast. Remember the term osteo. Osteo term is related to always bones. Okay. So, bone cells are osteoblast, osteocytes, osteoclast. And here you can see bone marrow. The very inside of bone is bone marrow. So now, what is the difference between these three cells? Oh, we will. It's very deep. I think you need not uh, need to learn. Even I don't mm -hmm. have a clear concept regarding oh. these three. Bone marrow is the soft, spongy tissue that is located in the modulary um, cavities. Okay, so bone marrow is found only in the modulary cavities, like in long bones, in large bones, in the certain large bones, yes. It is responsible for making red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So you can see here, from bone marrow, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets are formed. So it's very important question in exam point of view. Bone matrix consists of about 33% of organic matter, mostly collagen, and 67% inorganic matter, mostly calcium phosphate. Okay, so mostly of bone is made up of calcium phosphate that is inorganic and 33% of is collagen fiber now minerals make bone rigid and protein provides strength okay so you can see here collagen is a protein and this calcium phosphate is mineral so both are present in a huge amount in our skeletal system. So protein, protein is providing strength. Minerals are providing rigidity. As we have seen in that discussion, uh, when uh, in a muscutinate we are pouring a uh, paste of calcium. Means yes when i think you all know calcium uh, you are you have seen white washing your home yes so during white wash uh, what uh, what mineral is used what is the thing that you have, you see by which material white washing is done Yes, anyone? Calcium oxide. Mm, yes. Please repeat, I didn't get you. Calcium oxide. Yes, very good. Calcium oxide is the, uh, means oxide ha happens when it comes with oxygen, with when it comes in contact with oxygen but the thing is it is lime right chuna yeah in simple desi language it is chuna so white washing is done by chuna so chuna is simple cal calcium so when uh, chuna or lime in english so when lime comes in contact with ox oxygen and water that is means uh, it comes in co uh, contact with when we uh, pour water in it and we make a paste 
then it you can see the reaction uh, if you have not seen then uh, do a experiment make a bowl of lime and mix water in it you can see how heat is coming out how reaction is taking place it will seem like it is boiling okay so this is a reaction between lime and uh, oxygen mixed in water that makes lime oxide uh, calcium oxide so uh, that is calcium so if that paste that lime water paste is uh, poured in a mosquito net then the net will be hard after becoming uh, after drying out so like that only how bone is made up of collagen fiber is that mosquito net and calcium phosphate is that lime paste so collagen fiber is protein providing strength and minerals providing rigidity because it is hard next type of bones bones are of generally five types first of all long bones greater length than width and are slightly curved for strength okay for example humerus ulna radius femur tibia fibula do you all know this name of bones where they reside yes ma'am hands and legs like okay no problem if you don't it, if you know then it's very good if you don't know we will learn all these things the total 206 bones we will learn and it's very easy to uh, understand and it's very easy to remember you all will remember all the bones okay short bones cube shaped and uh, nearly equal in length and width for example, carpal and tarsal. Okay, let me tell you why when uh, where the side so easy to understand for you. Uh, long bones are humerus. Humerus is present in upper arm. That long bone is humerus. Like these long bones are present. Femur is present in our thigh. Okay, ulna is our lower hand. Radius is also in our lower hand. Tibia fibula in our lower leg. Now, short bone is cube shape, nearly equal in length and width. For example, carpal and tarsal. Carpal uh, and tarsal are in hand and in legs. Okay. Carpal is in hand, means in our. Um, yes. Palm, basically. And tarsal is in our feet. Now, flat bones. Flat bones are usually curved, thin, and flattened. For example, cranial, sternum, ribs, scapulae. Cranial bone are the bones covering brain. Mean, means uh, cranial bones are forming our skull. Okay, the covering of brain in our head, that is a skull, and the skull is made up of cranial bones. Next is sternum. Sternum is the mid bone in our chest. Ribs, you all know ribs. And scapula is the shoulder blade. Irregular bones are, here you can see the picture, yes. This is humerus, these are ulna radius, this is femur, this is tibia fibula. The front bone in the chest is sternum. Here you can see larger view of sternum. And these are ribs. 
so this is long bone this is short bone this carpal present in palm also tarsal present in feet now um, here it is flat bone sternum you can see the picture of sternum here and next irregular bones irregular sept and do not fit into other bones classification categories okay means uh, when we are classifying bones this type of bones do not form under long bone neither short bone neither flat bone neither sismoid bone they do not fit any structure of the body they are having their own structure that is vertebra and hip bones okay this is a single vertebra a vertebra you can see it do not fit in any kind of structure in the body in other type of bones it's having its own kind of structure and that is very necessary for covering our or protecting our spinal cord so next is sismoid bone sismoid is seed shaped bone okay for example patella patella is the kneecap you can see here here it is kneecap and it is shaped like this okay so patella is a is an example of sismoid bone okay now we will learn here division of skeletal system so the human skeleton consists of total 206 bones 206 bones are present in an adult not in a baby okay so how many bones could we find in a baby? Would you answer please? Around 300 ma'am, I'm not sure. Yes, you are very uh, close. So it's, a, it's just 100 plus from 206, it's 306 in babies. When they are born, in when just they are born only in the beginning they are having 306 bones and as they gradually grow up bones connect and they may when they are become adult it becomes 206 bones now bones of skeleton are grouped into two principal divisions axial skeleton that is consisting of 80 bones and second is appendicular skeleton that is consisting of 126 bones okay so axial skeleton forms the longitudinal part of body okay axial is the central part you can see here here in this picture axial skeleton is depicted by a little bit bluish in color and appendicular skeleton is a little bit yellowish gray in color you can see the color difference in this picture so this bluish colored skeleton is axial skeleton that is center part of body and appendicular skeletons are consisting of Peripheral parts, those are limbic uh, limbs, our four limbs, upper limbs and lower limbs. Okay. So axial skeletal form longitudinal part of body, body, skull bone, skull bones, 
auditory ossicles means ear bones hyoid bone vertebral column ribs and sternum you will understand uh, by seeing only so also you will understand by uh, after knowing the name of bones where they are residing in so let us go ahead appendicular skeleton consisting of 126 bones uh, consists of bones of upper and lower limbs that are extremities and the bones forming the girdles that connect the limbs to the axial skeleton okay two gird girdles are there that is shoulder girdle and pelvic girdle those those are the girdles connecting the limbs from the central part of body so axial skeleton is consisting of skull which is protecting our brain so here in this picture you can see the colorful structure of skull okay so this colorful structure is made up made for just understanding so skull consisting of total 22 bones bones can be classified by location here in this skull bones can be classified by location so here you can see frontal bone is depicted by yellow color and it is in front of our head or it is forming our our forehead that is why it is, this is known as frontal bone next is parietal bone parietal bone is just behind the frontal bone that is depicted by blue color then temporal temporal word is uh, means temporal bone is at the region of a ear temporal word came from tympanic or ear due to ear it is known as temporal it is located in the uh, region of ear that is why it is temporal next is occipital okay it is depicted by green color at the back of the bone you can uh, you can feel this bone so when if you oh, if you touch your skull from outside only at the back of the head that is occipital bone now how they are forming uh, oh yes ethmoid and sphenoid here just uh, just in front of temporal bone it is sphenoid bone okay and at the middle of the uh, um, eyes or just behind the nose ethmoid bone is present i will show you a picture if it is let me Can you see my uh, screen now? Yes, ma'am. We can see your screen. Okay. So, let us go to the pictures. You will get it. Where could we get just these two bones? Yes, in this picture you can see a little bit, but I want to get a proper picture.
In this picture, you can see a little bit. Let me find a proper picture. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can see this picture. Yes. Yes. So these are the ethmoid and sphenoid bones. Okay. You can see this is the view from back side. This is the front view. And this is the side view. Okay. Now just I have told you which one is ethmoid and which one is sphenoid. Now tell me. This red colored bone is ethmoid or sphenoid. Behind the nose, red color bone is present and it is covering our brain. Here you can see in this curvature with frontal bo bone, it is covering our brain. And then this bone is making the flow for brain and it is um, connecting with occipital bone. Sorry, temporal bone. Please answer first. Which bone is named what? Gray color uh, part is, I think, sphenoid, and the uh, orange color one is uh, uh, ethmoid. Yes, very good. So these are these are the pictures of sphenoid and ethmoid. So these are one means single in number and they are forming the skull okay now here you can see that uh, the axial and appendicular skeleton is Mm. The axial and appendicular skeleton are shown. Wonder why they are disturbing. Okay. So axial skeleton is depicted by bluish in color, and appendicular skeleton is depicted by a bit reddish in color. So what are axial skeleton consisting of? Axial skeleton is consisting of at first skull, then ear bones, then hyoid bone. Hyoid bone is holding our tongue. Okay, it is present in our neck region, not uh, neck, it is upper neck region. Means hyoid bone is the root of our tongue. Okay. From hyoid bone only, the tongue is connected. Next is uh, this long vertebrae or vertebral column and rib cage. These are the bones of axial skeleton. And appendicular skeleton is consisting shoulder girdle, clavicle bones. Solar blade, scapula, humerus, ulna, radius, then, uh, yes, carpals, meta metacarpals, phalanges, and uh, then hip girdle or pelvic girdle. There are also various types so in three bones, in three pair of bones forming pelvic girdle, then femur. Uh, tibia, fibula, tarsal, metatarsal, phalanges. 
we will learn all this in detail yes now we have completed the skull then we are going for facial bones now facial bones are consisting of 14 bones we have just discussed about skull how many bones are consisting of skull means how many bones consisting skull 22 ma'am yes very good so now we are going for facial bones it, it is 14 in number they are found in the front of skull and make up the face now first of all uh, the larger okay start from the small nasal bone nasal bone are two yes i should tell you which one is one and which one is two here in this skull so frontal bone is not divided by two spheres so it is one now parietal bone is found in both the sides left and right so parietal is two temporal is also present in both left and right side it is also two sphenoid is one and ethmoid is one we have just seen and occipital is also one okay so these are the numbers of sorry these are the numbers of cranium and cranium is consisting of eight bones our whole skull is consisting of 22 bones the skull is making the bra uh, brain covering and face means brain covering is known as cranium bones and this facial bones are 14 so 14 plus 8 equal to 22 okay so our skull is consisting both cranial and facial bones so cranial bone are one frontal two parietal two temporal one occipital one ethmoid one sphenoid eight bones now facial bones are 14 let us see that two nasal bones find in both left and right nose two lacrimal bones lacrimal bones are just in the corner of eyes you can see here in this picture sky colored depicted you can see my cursor right you can see my cursor yes ma'am okay so lacrimal bone depicted by sky blue color here in this picture uh, so it is just located in the corner of eyes so in both the corners two lacrimal bones next is inferior nasal concha so inferior nasal concha is also in both the sides left and right it is also two in number and palatine palatine is also found in both two in number and this gray colored structure that is uh sorry this this is nothing so this blue colored structure that is in the middle of nose that is vomer so it is in the middle it's not fine in left and right it is single it is boomer next is upper jaw upper jaw bone is maxilla it is found in both left and right so it is two in number and the flow which is making the bone which is making the flow of eyes that is zygomatic that is also found in both the sides zygomatic that is two in number and the lower jaw okay so lower jaw bone is the strongest bone in face okay so this is also a, a important question lower jaw bone is the strongest bone in our face that is known as 
mandible it is one single in number Facial bone is consisting of a canal in the skull. There are three auditory ossicles on the each side of head. They work together to transmit sound waves from environment to inner ear. So here in this picture, you can see the bones are depicted in brown color here. Here it is incus. It is stipis and this white color bone is milius. Actually, all the bones are having same color. It is white. But for your understanding, it is colored here. So, incus, stipis and milius. These are the three bones. And uh, the next is hyoid bone. Hyoid bone is one in number. That is the root of tongue. You can see here it is present. And this is the shape of hyoid bone. From these, tongue is originated. Next is vertebral column. Okay, vertebral column is consisting of 26 bones. Now, each vertebra is given a name. Means all these 26 bones can be identified by its particular name. Okay, so how they are named? They are named according to their location. Okay. So, just after the skull, this vertebra is starting. So, at the very beginning, just below the skull, cervical vertebra is present. Cervical vertebra consisting seven vertebral bones. Okay. And just below cervical, thoracic is starting. Thoracic, because of they are located in the thoracic region. So, thoracic vertebra consisting 12 bones. Next is lumbar vertebra. Lumbar is consisting of 5. Here you can see red color is depicting cervical, green color depicting thoracic. And uh, this blue color depicting lumbar. Then yellow color is depicting sacrum. Okay. Sacrum is a fused bone. So actually they are the fusion of five different bones. But as they are fused into one, so they are counted as one single vertebra that is sacrum then at last the tailbone that is oxys you can see here in the picture the last portion of vertebra that is the tailbone that is oxys that is also a fuse fused bone it is fusion of four bones that is oxys Fusion of four bones, but fused into one vertebra only. That is why it is known, known as one single coccyx. Okay. Now, you can see here a picture of vertebra very clearly. A shape of vertebra. And here, in, in this is the picture of fused bones. You can see here. Uh, this is a single vertebra, how normal vertebra look like. And this is the fusion of vertebras. 
okay you can see in this picture here this lower portion is the frontal side and this is the back side upper portion is the back side of body so uh, this is the spinal process of vertebra this is a spinal process you can see if you uh, if you touch your back and you will feel the hard portion of your vertebra that hard portion is the spinal process if you feel different vertebras differently uh, in in many of the humans you can see from back side that uh, uh, different vertebras can be counted on their back so that that counting can be done means uh, the Final process Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, your screen is not visible to us and your sound is also not coming to us. What you said before one minute, we can't hear. Vertebra is kept below this vertebra. Another vertebra is kept like here. It is you're, you're yes. not, you were not audible right now. You are, but previously you were not. Oh, god! So tell me in that point only when I am not audible. Lepalika, tell me, Lepalika, ma'am was telling you, ma'am. I think you were not audible to hear her also. Uh -huh. So when did I? When my voice were not there. When you were explaining this uh, uh, coccy coccygic bone, the you do niche wala diagram hai, that grey color mein, wo wala. Uh, this one, the last fused coccyx bone. No, below this, below this. This one. Right side of this one. Yeah, this one. This one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this one is not coccyx. Okay, this is a structure of a single vertebra. A single vertebra looks like this. Okay, means, uh, yes, this is the structure of a single vertebra, but uh, it, the structure modifies according to region. So, what I was telling that a single. You can understand that this is a single vertebra. Yes, yes. That single vertebra we understood means how single vertebra fused in back side. That thing you are you was explaining. No, no, no. All vertebras are not fused. It is only fused in the lower region. That is sacrum and coccyx. Only okay. sacrum and coccyx are fused. Other vertebras are always separate by their own. Okay. Only fused bones are two, sacrum and coccyx. So sacrum forming one bone fused by five different bones and coccyx fused by four different bones. So if we add this, all these vertebras, then uh, we will we can find that there are total 26 vertebras but if, if we want to separate these fused bones then how many it is happening please tell me 33 ma yes Thank very good it is 33 if we are counting the fused bones separately but we do not count because it it do not seem us as different. So we count as sacrum and coccyx as one single bone only. So 
if the question is asked how many vertebras are present in vertebral column it will be 26 now here in this picture you can see in the bottom right side picture it is the structure of a single vertebra so yes vertebras also modify their shapes according to their location means uh, vertebras of cervical region will be a very a bit different from thoracic lumbar they are modified according to their location but similar these these vertebras are very similar so here is a general structure of a single vertebra so here in this picture you can see this is the body of vertebra and this body is frontal side in a body and uh, this is the spinal process spinal process is fine in the back side of body so this is what i was explaining that this is spinal process which is forming the back side of body we can we can feel this is spinal process if you touch our back backbone in some human uh, this spinal process is seen very clearly we can we can count their vertebra in their back right if you have noticed any of the humans we can we can count their vertebra from back side so that counting is done by this spinal process only because it is the back it is the back of uh, uh, this vertebra okay and here you can see this is the hollow part am, am i audible properly now yes ma'am yes, ma okay so you can see here this hollow part in the vertebral region so uh, this hollow part is left for spinal cord okay so uh, when uh, the vertebral column is made one after another such vertebras are kept like this in this structure here also you can see the structure is formed so um, it is the body this body is here you can see and these are the uh, this is the spinal process the back of vertebral column is spinal process and here here the hollow part this hollow part is present that is for what uh, spinal cord okay so it's eight now i think we should, we should stop here okay any any question any confusion any doubt very shortly after the facial bone yes will you facial bone what you explain that bone ear bones yes ma'am is there any problem yes ma'am yes please speak out yes ma'am after the facial bones means you explain that uh, uh, no no uh, means knows how many there nasal and uh, lacrimal aim but uh, in the slide details not mentioned only pictures are given yes no. i will uh, send you one flow chart of uh, these bones and that will be very easy for you to remember yes ma'am means special bones only 14 bones are, are written here they are found on the front of the uh, skull and make up the face means how many facial bones means 
oh, what are the explain in the slide means color that uh, these all bones we will consider as facial bone yes the colored portion in this picture are part of facial bones okay and the uh, colorless picture is form of which bone cranial bone yes very good so cranial bones those are what in number uh, eight number yes cranial bones are eight in number and facial bones are 14 in number so both are forming skull so they are total 22 in skull bone okay ma'am and also six ear bones one six also considered as a new okay 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 huh got it your bones that higher bones these all are included in facial bones mm -hmm. no 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 they are not included in facial bones facial bones are only these 14 okay okay you are getting confused yes yes ma'am okay i will see the recording let me explain once again then if you don't understand uh, we will see that first okay. our bones are divided into axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton okay axial skeleton is consisting of a central part appendicular skeleton is consisting the limbs and the girdles which are connecting the limbs to the central part of body now axial skeleton consisting of skull bones which is 22 in number and skull bone is consisting of cranial bones and facial bones okay is it clear yes, yes, yes ma so, so skull bone is 22 made up of cranial bones that is 8 in number and facial bones that is 14 in number you can see in this picture these are uh, facial bones and these are cranial bones. Okay. Now, this is the skull. Leave the skull now. Leave the skull now. Okay. Second is ear bone. Ear bone is not consisted as skull bones. Okay. Ear bone are separate. Ear bones are six in numbers. Then, leave the ear bones. Next is hyoid bone. Hyoid bone is single it is the root of tongue okay then vertebral column it is at the back side of body it is 26 in numbers we have just discussed vertebral column only is it clear now yes yes ma'am got it ma'am i was confused in that uh, your bones and higher bone means uh, i did not get it means it is not a part of the a skull bone okay ma'am thank you ma'am yes, I, I got you confusing that is why <laughs> okay so it's 8 5 i think we should stop the class now okay. we will start tomorrow from tip cage <laughs>